Hey everyone welcome back to a Unity 3D tutorial. One of my most favorite effects in a video game is the radial bullet spread effect. To create this we will start by creating a controller script that is highly customizable. We will then set up a bullet prefab for our controller and finish with some particle effects. Let's get started. To begin I will create a capsule game object that will act as our player for this prototype, centering it in the middle of the scene. Now let's name our capsule player, and create a bullet prefab. You can essentially use anything you'd like for the bullet but for demonstration purposes I'm going to use a sphere. Let's name this object bullet so we don't get confused. Now add a rigid body component so that we can manipulate its velocity. I've disabled gravity so that the object floats throughout the scene, and set the collider as a trigger. Let's create a folder to store the materials for our primitive game objects. Right click, create, material, I will name this one bullet, and create one for the player. Select the material and inside the inspector under Albedo, I will just change the color, then drag and drop the material onto the game object. Green for the player and red for our bullet. Now create a prefab of our bullet by dragging it from the hierarchy into the project folder. We can now delete it from our scene and add a new script to the player. I have named mine radial bullet controller. Double click the script to open it in Visual Studio or your own external script editor of choice. Let's begin by setting up some variables. I'm going to also use the header attribute, which takes in a string, called Project Isle Settings, for the name to style the inspector. Create a variable of type integer, called Number of Projectiles as well as a float to store the speed of the projectile. We will also need a reference to our bullet prefab that we created earlier. Let's create some private variables now. We are going to need a vector3 to store the starting position of the projectile. We will also need a constant float to help calculate the direction of the bullet, I will call this radius and set its value as 1. We aren't going to be using the start method so we can delete that. Let's create a new private void called spawn projectile, that will spawn x amount of projectiles. We will shoot the projectiles whenever the player presses the spacebar, so we check for when that key has been pressed. We will set the start point vector to equal the player's current transform dot position and pass our spawn projectile method the number of projectiles to spawn. Oops! I forgot to set an integer as an argument for our method. I'll just call this number of projectiles with an underscore as it is a local variable. This function will contain the majority of the code, so let's get started. We will need a float to step through all the possible angles, which will be 360 degrees divided by the number of projectiles. Another float called angle with an initial value of 0, which will be used as an index in our loop later on. Now create a for loop, for integer i equals 0. i is less than number of projectiles minus 1, i plus plus. This first part is trigonometry heavy, but I hope this illustration explains what we are trying to achieve here. First of all we need to find the coordinates of a point. X coordinate can be calculated with help of sinus current angle multiplied by pi, divided by 180, multiplied again by our constant set earlier. Our second coordinate, Y, can be calculated in the same way but this time we use cosine of the angle. These make up the direction calculations. Let's move on to setting them up in vectors. 
create a vector 3 called projectile vector that will store the x and y positions we just calculated, and setting its z value to 0. Finally we can now easily get our projectile move direction by subtracting projectile vector and start position, normalizing it and then multiplying it by our move speed. Let's instantiate a new temporary game object passing it the projectile prefab, start point and quaternion.identity. We can now get the rigid body component of the newly created game object and set its velocity of the move direction. Cast this into a new vector 3 with projectile move direction dot x, 0, and projectile move direction dot y. Finally we can increment the angle with angle step. Save the script and return back to Unity. We need to reference the bullet prefab we created earlier and set some values for our projectile speed and total number of projectiles to spawn. Hit play and let's give it a shot. Not all the bullets are spawning correctly let's find out why. Ah yes, the for loop should iterate when less than, and equal to the number of projectiles. All of the prefabs should now spawn correctly. Hit play and let's give it a shot. As you can see our controller is now working as expected. Regardless of how many bullets we spawn the angles are always calculated and the bullets spread is evenly laid out. Thank goodness for trigonometry. I will start by adding a particle system component to the prefab. Open the render module and select a material for the particles. I'm just going to use the Unity built-in default particle material. I want to create a smoky trail effect so I am going to set the start speed to zero, and the simulation space to world. We want lots of smoke so let's bump up the particle rate over time inside the emission module, to something like 100. As you can see this creates a nice trailing effect with the particle system. To finish this effect I will use the color over lifetime module and create a fiery gradient. The particles will spawn red and transition into a smoky color at the end of their life cycle. You can add more points inside your gradient by clicking just below the display box. This allows you to fine tune the gradient. Now we have created something that is starting to look like a quick and easy fireball. Finally I will set the start lifetime to 2.5 and the start size to 0.5, and also changing the shape from a cone to a sphere. Remember to apply the changes to the prefab then remove it from your scene. Thanks for watching this tutorial, I hope it provides you some value. Please consider subscribing and have a good day. By the way, the complete project is available on GitHub as always.